My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this Holy Eucharist in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to you, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatest sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to, ent to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in hear, hearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, to Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came towards them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you, on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sing, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord.
My dear friends, today we are celebrating the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us reflect today on this theme. God's presence and his saving power. Let us experience God's presence and his saving power in our lives, especially as we pray this Sunday. Dear friends, certainly to, uh, to understand God's, oh God's presence and to experience his saving power, we must be in the middle of something and knowing what the situation is all about. In the gospel, the disciples understood something. They were in a boat on the lake and battling with a heavy sea. They understood and knew they were in danger. For us to understand God's presence and his saving power, we must be in the middle of something. For us to understand and for us to feel his saving hand. As their boat was tossed about, the disciples could have asked, where is Jesus? And their answer to this question was clear. Jesus was praying. They knew he was praying. He was not with them. While praying, he became aware of their struggle to the small boat with a great sea. And he came to them in their struggle. But then came along something they could not understand at all. They saw Jesus walking on the water towards them. And they were terrified as they thought it was a ghost and they cried out in fear. Even us gathered here if we should see something like this, all of us will be terrified. Probably we will begin to run out of the church. But as soon as Jesus realized that, he called out to them saying, courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter seemed to have understood that and wanted to even walk on the water towards Jesus. And Jesus allowed him. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, humbly he was frightened and began to sing into the water. As human beings, we have all we know, we cannot walk on water. That is practical. Even if we can swim, it would be difficult to swim in a very heavy and windy sea or even wider sea. The fear comes immediately if we should be left in this situation. Even if we are in the boat. And that's what came to Peter. In our own struggles with life and now with the pandemic, like what the disciples were going through, and we find ourselves asking the same question of the disciples. 
Where is the Lord? Though we are hanging on to our faith, but it is getting difficult. It's getting difficult. When we choose, it gets difficult. But when we take it a little bit easy, our help is in the name of the Lord, it, that difficulties become lighter. Dear friends, we are very anxious. We are worried. We are even frightened of the pandemic. Now live alone that. Some of us are even frightened of what is happening. There are so many bad and sad situations happening even around us. Live, live alone around the world. Life become a challenge itself. Friends, I assure you that the Lord is never far from us. In the second reading, from the letter to the Romans, Paul reminds us, Paul even remembers God's goodness and presence to his people throughout history of salvation up to this present time of ours. Paul reminds us in the second reading about that. The presence of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord tie memorial and that goodness and presence of the Lord never diminishes. It remains even now with us. One of the passages in the same letter to the Romans, Paul also speaks of Jesus as one who is the right, who is seated at the right hand of God interceding for us. It is as reassuring you and me to think that the Lord is always praying for us. Just as he prayed for the disciples. We are his disciples. He is always praying for us. His prayerfulness and his presence in our struggle of life is real. Just like the disciples in the boat and their boat was tossed about. The Lord is present in our life with all the challenges even including the pandemic which is toasting us around. Let us not be afraid. Let us surrender ourselves in the protection of the Lord as we do the little we can. The much left is done by the Lord. Today's gospel reading prompts each of us to question what keeps me floating when life is full of struggle as it is? We could answer like this. We could either say our family or our friends which keep us floating, which keep us moving in this sea of challenges. But also as people of faith we would add, it is the Lord who is present, walking with us all the time on the stormy waters which he alone can calm. Today's first reading suggests that he also comes to us in the calm, in the sound of a gentle, I mean a gentle breeze, the Lord whispers to us in silence because he's present. When the disciples first had a sense of the Lord's physical presence, 
with them in the storm, they thought he was a ghost and they were terrified. Yet, there is nothing ghostly about the Lord's presence to us, especially in the Eucharist, as we are going to partake in the Eucharist. is real. His presence is real. And his presence in us is also real. And let us allow him always to be present in us. Like Peter, even after we have become aware of the Lord's presence, because we have little faith, we can still feel ourselves sinking. Let us ask the Lord to help us in our little faith. When we begin to lose sight of him again, and we, we sense that we are going down, again like Peter, let us call out to the Lord in prayer. Lord, save me. This should be our prayer today. Lord, save me. This is a prayer the Lord will always answer as he did for Peter and the disciples and he will do it for us and he will stretch his hand to save us. Let us keep walking towards Jesus always. Forget about the world. Forget about the things of the world. Let us keep walking towards Jesus and always cry out Lord, save us whenever we are in the middle of these challenges. Jesus, who is all the time present, whenever we are, or I am anxious, worried, and sinking in fear, will save me. Whenever we are anxious, whenever we are worried, Whenever we are sinking in fear, the Lord is there to save us. Arise, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, through God, through God from through God, begotten not made, consensual with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us make our prayers as God's faithful people looking to Jesus Christ as he encouraged 
the wave as I mean the waving faith of Saint Peter. So we know he is always with us, his hand outstretched to strengthen us and raise us up. For the protection and strengthening of the church wherever she is persecuted, and that the peace of Christ will bring an end to all violent conflict in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those dealing with the after effect of the chemical explosion in Beirut, may Christ bring comfort and healing to those who were harmed and bring peace to this region of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strengthening of marriage and the family life, and for all those preparing for marriage, that the Lord will fill them with virtue and a love that endures all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer will experience the redemptive meaning of suffering through friendship with Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are unemployed, that God will keep them from discouragement and enable them to secure good jobs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the concerns and desires that we hold in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. for the intention of Larisha Benson and the family, and for Sylvia Razo, that the Lord may grant their intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. For Brian Booth, that the good Lord may raise his soul in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, as you receive these prayers we make, Grant us a strong faith and an abiding trust in your Son, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hand for the praise and the praise, for our good and the good of all the church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you send us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you love in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, o Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that they have health as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the Francis our Pope, Alexander our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Brian, Booth, whom you have called from this world to yourself, 
grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command, and found by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as he forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, grace will grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin and saved from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace will grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my world, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. His body and blood keep us safe for eternal life. Justic and glorious is 
his work, his justice stands firm forever. He has given us a memorial of his wonders. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The bread which I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. He gives food to those who fear him, keeps his covenant ever in mind. His mighty works he has shown to his people by giving them the heritage of nations. The bread which I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. His handiwork is justice and truth. His precepts are all of them sure, standing firm forever and ever, wrought in uprightness and truth. He has sent redemption to his people and established his covenant forever. Holy is his name to be feared. The bread which I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Understanding marks all who attain it. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Word without end, amen. The bread which I will give is my flesh for the life of the world.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, Archangel. defend us in battle.